Hey guys, Megan here from Growing in Purple. Today I'm gonna show you how to make a quick poison ivy remedy. I call it poison ivy goo because it's so gooey, but it's um, gonna use three different herbs and it's really soothing for hot, itchy rashes like poison ivy. Um, it'll help to calm down the heat and help hopefully ease inflammation and soothe your skin and help dry that rash up a lot faster. So. Um, all you need is a magic bullet or any type of small blender. You can use a larger blender if you want to make a larger batch. Um, but I like to make my batches fresh and use the juice um, immediately. I'll put it in the fridge and store it for about 24 to 48 hours, but then I'll make a fresh batch after that. Now, if you want to make a larger batch, you can freeze the juice and you can pull that out later on in the year if you get a rash um, or poison ivy poison oak rash later on in the year. But you're gonna need a blender, you're gonna need a knife and a cutting board, a small bowl to catch your juice. Um, you're gonna need a cheesecloth, and I like to double layer mine to get rid of the herb bits. Um, and then you're gonna need herbs, okay? So here's what we're using. Um, we're gonna have three different things. First, you're going to use jewelweed. Now, I just collected my jewelweed about 15 or 20 minutes ago and it's looking pretty rough because this plant likes water and as soon as you pick it, it's gonna start wilting. Um, so the best way to use jewelweed is to use it fresh. Um, like I said, you can freeze it and use it later on if you need to, but jewelweed is a really great skin herb, specifically for hot itchy rashes like poison ivy. It's been used a long time for that. Now, there are different theories as to why jewelweed works so well for poison ivy. One idea is that the chemical that's in poison ivy binds to receptors on your skin cells, and it's believed that the chemical that is in jewelweed also binds to that exact same receptor. And so if you find yourself standing in a patch of poison ivy and you know what jewelweed looks like, you can quickly grab it and rub it and get all the juice out in between your hands and just rub it all over wherever you know you stepped or touched the poison ivy. And then hopefully the chemical that's in the juice of the jewelweed will bind to the receptors before the chemical in the poison ivy does. And hopefully that'll help you to have like a milder poison ivy rash um, or maybe not get one at all. So that's one idea. Um, another study was done that showed that people who got into poison oak or poison ivy and who used fresh jewelweed, it has to be fresh. So they say the extracts and I read that even poison, uh, I'm sorry, even jewelweed soaps are not more effective than using fresh jewelweed. But it reduced a poison ivy rash by 67%. That's what one study showed when fresh jewelweed was applied to a poison ivy rash. Um, it helped to reduce the rash and make it go away faster. So that's pretty cool. So jewelweed is gonna be the primary herb that we use in this poison ivy goo, as I like to call it, because it's so gooey. So here we are right outside my house, close to the creek and a pond where the soil is nice and moist. And for the most part, it's quite shady here. And you will see that we have a ton of jewelweed growing here. If you know what jewelweed looks like, you'll see it everywhere through here. And if not, I'll link to a video below where I explain how to identify jewelweed. Anyway, jewelweed likes to grow in these shady, moist spots. And it's quite invasive. It grows everywhere. So we're just gonna harvest five to 10 little stalks of jewelweed. The smaller ones, the ones that are nice and juicy and not too tough yet, they'll blend up really well to make our poison ivy goo. We're also gonna use plantain. So there are two different types of plantain that grow where I live and in most places in the world, I believe. There's two different types. There's a broadleaf and narrow leaf. This is the broadleaf because it's wide. Um, and they're both used the same. They are um, like an astringent herb. They're very tightening and toning to the tissues. So if you have a weepy rash like poison ivy, it helps to kind of tighten those tissues up and dry it out a little faster. Plantain is also has some antimicrobial benefits. It could be because it tightens up the tissue so that microbes can't go into the tissue as easily. Um, 
It's also like a demulcent, so it's really soothing to the skin and it's very cooling. So all of these herbs energetically are cooling and so they're perfect for rashes that tend to be hot energetically, like poison ivy. Really swollen, inflamed, that kind of thing. As you can see, the plantain is plentiful here on the ground in the shady area. Plantain also grows in full sun areas. You can find two different varieties here in East Tennessee. It's uh, broadleaf plantain and narrowleaf plantain. Obviously, the broadleaf has a wider span and the narrowleaf is taller and more narrow. And either of them can be used for this poison ivy remedy that we're gonna make. We're going to use our jewel weed and we're going to use aloe. So most people know about aloe. I just clipped this off one of my aloe plants um, and we're going to use the whole entire thing. We're not going to scrape out just the gel, which some people do just scrape out just the gel, but we're going to use the outside of the skin and everything. Aloe is very similar to plantain in that it has some antimicrobial benefits. Um, it's really soothing to the skin. It's cooling. Um, so it's got a lot of good benefits that way. All of these herbs mixed together are just amazing for poison ivy. And I have used this combination and this recipe for years on myself and my kids and have had really good results with it whenever we get into poison ivy. So the thing that you're gonna do is you're just going to cut your aloe into chunks. You don't have to be, um, you don't have to get it really small or anything. Just cut it up into chunks and you're gonna pop that into your cup for blending and same thing with your plantain now here's the ratio that I like to use I like to do about two parts of the jewel weed and then I do about one part of aloe and one part of plantain so your part can be anything I'm just gonna kind of eyeball it so folk herbalists we like to not be really particular about measurements and whatnot so I'm just gonna eyeball it so that's my one part for my aloe I don't know if you guys can see that and I'm gonna just tear off some plantain and get about the same amount in there for plantain um, you can cut it or you can just tear it and stick it in there so that plantains quite thick and I may want a little bit more I'm sorry the aloe is quite thick I may want a little bit more plantain because I kind of want this to be more drying all right so that's good that's about about equal portions and then when it comes to the jewel weed, I'm gonna do double what I have of each of these herbs. I'm gonna double these. Now you're gonna to wanna to use the stem because the stem has a lot of the juicy goodness in it and you're gonna to wanna to use the leaves. So break these off. You can do bigger chunks. And if you don't get the ratios right, it's okay. It's not that big of a deal. All of these herbs are gonna be really good for a poison ivy rash. You don't have to be specific. It's like overly specific, you don't have to worry about it that much, just you're gonna get some benefit from all of these things anyway. Okay, so we've got our jewel weed, our plantain, and our aloe, and we're just gonna blend this up. Actually, I'm gonna put a little bit of water in here because sometimes um, the blender, the, the way this blender works, um, everything wants to get stuck and it's hard to blend, so I'm gonna put a little bit of water in real quick. Maybe about a tablespoon is all I used. And you can always add more if you want, but just remember, whenever you put water into something, it's gonna contribute to uh, bacteria and microbes growing. So if you store this in your refrigerator, you're not gonna wanna use it after it's 24 to 48 hours old because it could grow bacteria. And if you have like an open rash on your skin, you could give yourself an infection by doing that. So, that was... so I just shake this around a little bit to try to get everything blended up. this out in this cheesecloth. Ooh, it's going everywhere. 
I'm a mess when I make stuff in the kitchen with herbs. <laughs> I'm not really um, careful about everything. All right, so basically you're gonna take your cheesecloth and you're gonna bundle it up and you can see the juice already soaking through. And this is gonna be super gooey. This is why I call it poison ivy goo. It's kind of like herbal snot actually. It's really gross. Like, And it's all of that aloe basically that's giving it that juicy gel stuff. So I'm just twisting the top and I'm just squeezing the bottom as much as I can to get the juice out. Because we don't really want all of the herb pieces because when you do have a poison ivy rash and you put this on it, if you were to have all those herb pieces in there, it would just leave like little green flecks of um, the leaf and stem parts all over you and that's just kind of messy. So I like to squeeze the juice out so that I just rub juice on me. And then if you were to put this in like a silicone ice cube tray, you could freeze it and then you could just dethaw a cube whenever you needed it. So you're, you're gonna leave all of the plant parts in your cheesecloth and you can compost that, throw it away. So that's pretty good. Yeah, see, it's really snotty-like. And you're just gonna rub that on your skin. It's gonna leave you a little green or brown. And when you leave this in the fridge, it's gonna turn brown, but it's really soft and soothing to your skin. And that's it. So you can just put this in your fridge just as it is. And then whenever you, if you get a poison ivy rash and you make this as uh, fresh, you make this fresh, you can come and just dip your fingers in. You can just rub it on the rash. And I like to take a blow dryer and then I like to blow dry it so that it dries and it also helps the rash to not itch so badly. Because when you have, let me rinse my hands off real quick. Okay, when, when you have, <laughs> so when you have a poison ivy rash, the histamine inside of the cells builds up and that's what makes you itch. And then when you itch it, you kind of release the histamines, the histamine off of the cell receptors and that's what relieves the itch. But a doctor told me once, when you use um, hot or cold, when you change the temperature of your skin, so you can use a blow dryer to blow dry your poison ivy rash, it causes the histamine to be released from the cells, the receptors on the cells, and that alleviates that itching sensation. So whenever I put this poison ivy goo on a patch of poison ivy, I like to take a blow dryer and blow dry it. That way it kind of dries this gel on my skin but it also alleviate, alleviates the itching and I don't scratch at my skin too much, so that's really helpful. So you can just store this in the refrigerator as it is and then use it as often as you need it to put it on and blow dry it off um, and over, the, over four, 24 to 48 hours and then make yourself a fresh batch or if you've frozen the juice in ice cubes, you just get out an ice cube, stick it in your bowl and stick it in the fridge and let it melt and then you'll have fresh poison ivy goo to put on your rashes and hopefully it will soothe the itching and um, relieve some inflammation a little bit um, and really just support your skin so that your tissue can rebuild and regenerate and hopefully dry that rash up a lot faster. So thanks for watching and I hope this is helpful. Um, make sure that you like this video and subscribe to get more videos, uh, more herbal tips, more natural non-toxic living tips and just to get a behind the scenes glimpse at my family's life. Talk to you guys later.